Let's explore the major parts of the brain and their functions. Uh, based on the color, you can see the brain can be divided into three parts. We have the forebrain. The big yellow section is the forebrain over here. Then you have the midbrain. This pink section over here is the midbrain. And I used to think that the midbrain is the middle section. No, that is still part of the forebrain. Midbrain is a very tiny section over here. Uh, midbrain is actually connecting the forebrain to the last part, the hindbrain. The hindbrain is this part over here, which also contains the brain stem. So let's look at the different parts, like the majority, the important parts, and then look at what are their functions. So the forebrain itself can be divided into two major parts. You have this big light yellow section, which we call the cerebrum. And you can think that most of the time when we're thinking about, when you're talking about thinking, <laughs> you're talking about our cerebrum. And then what about the inner section of the forebrain? Well, there are three important parts to it. This part over here is called the thalamus. The part that is below it is called the hypothalamus. The, st the word hypo even means below. So it's the hypothalamus. And then one of the important parts over here is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is the master gland. It controls all the other glands of your body. So these are the, some of the major parts of the forebrain. What are the function? Well, here are a few functions. Well, thinking, sensing objects, memory, like memory comes from your forebrain, your emotions. Yes, love, for example, doesn't come from the heart. It comes from the forebrain. And other things like your hunger, um, your sleep, your, you know, the feeling of fullness that you get after you eat something, stuff like that. All these are the stuff that your forebrain controls. So these are all the functions of your forebrain. Now let's go to the next part. We will not talk much about the midbrain. It's a very tiny section. We'll ignore it in this video. But let's talk about the hindbrain. There are some important parts over here. You can see there are three important parts. You have this section, this lump-like thing, which we call the pons. Then you have the brain stem, which is called the medulla. Or it's also called the medulla oblongata. And then you have this, uh, this uh, tree-like structure over here, which we, people also often call the small brain. It is called the cerebellum. I used to get confused between this term cerebellum and cerebrum. I don't know why people term it like that, but the cerebrum with the R, that's the one that's like the big portion of your forebrain. And the cerebellum with an L, that's that tiny hindbrain. So what are the functions of the hindbrain? Well, if you look at the medulla oblongata, its main function, the brain stem, its main function is controlling the essential involuntary processes, like your heart beating, your breathing, all the important involuntary process that's necessary to you know, sustain life, they are controlled by the medulla oblongata. Along with that, your reflexes, some of your reflexes also go through the brain. And some of these reflexes are also controlled by the medulla. All right, what about the pons, you may ask? Well, we'll not worry too much about the pons. Turns out that it also controls some of the uh, essential involuntary control. So it's not like, you know, there, there is overlap of functions. For example, pons will control sleep as well. Pons also controls your breathing cycle as well. So yeah, so we'll not worry too much about it. But then let's come to the cerebellum. What are its core functions? Well, one of its core functions is balance. A sense of balance that you get, for example, your ability to walk or ride a bike, that, uh, you know, you, you need a balance over there, that comes from your cerebellum. And when you're drinking, when somebody drinks alcohol, the cerebellum gets affected and that's why they're unable to balance. Secondly, your motor memory. What is that you may ask? Well, you know, sometimes how like, for example, you're riding a bike, you don't have to think about pedaling. It just happens automatically, we say. Uh, if you have spent enough time on typing on a keyboard, you don't have to remember which keys, which keys where. It automatically happens. That's what we call the motor memory, where, you don't, it, where the, the memory feels like it's just automatic. You don't have to think about it. All of that is controlled by your cerebellum.